the 2013 Leslie University commencement is called to order. Whether you have completed a major in history or illustration, English or photography, global studies, animation, art therapy or design, you've learned more than specific facts and skills, such as the ability to analyze and consider complexity, the ability to communicate both personally and professionally, and the ability to work independently and collaboratively. Congratulations. David McCullough, distinguished and prolific author, influential historian, masterful documentary narrator, revered television host, and esteemed lecturer, teacher, essayist, and editor, you have chronicled American history for this and future generations. And you are hailed as the master of the art of narrative history. Your contributions to American literature have received numerous honors including two Pulitzer Prizes, two National Book Awards, two Francis Parkman Prizes from the American Society of Historians, the National Humanities Medal, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest national award presented to a civilian. Your extraordinary body of work has been published and translated in 15 countries around the world with more than 10 million copies in print. Your first book, you bring, your, you bring wit, wisdom, and profound analyses to topics ranging from your first book on the Johnstown Flood to John Adams, 1776, The Greater Journey, Truman, and several others. You bring history and your intriguing subjects to vivid life for your readers through your masterful stories. In illuminating our history, our historic context, you awaken an appreciation and understanding of the complexities of the modern world, and your readers anxiously anticipate your next book about the Wright brothers and their amazing journey. You have been just as, just as successful as a public television host and narrator bringing your unique perspective and distinctive voice to the Smithsonian's The American Experience, Ken Burns's The Civil War, and the acclaimed Depression-era movie Sea Biscuit. A Renaissance man with multiple talents and interests, you are an accomplished painter and world traveler, as well as a devoted husband, father, and grandfather. A writer first and foremost, you recently discussed your passion for books with the Boston Globe recounting your childhood love for reading and acknowledging that, quote, books can change your life. Some of the most influential people in our lives are characters we met in books. So thank you, David McCullough, for bringing to life some of the most fascinating characters in American history through your painstaking research and your engaging narratives which you have shared with the world. In honor of your remarkable achievements, your brilliant prose, and your outstanding contributions to our nation's understanding of itself and its history, Leslie University is proud to confer upon you the honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters, given in Boston, Massachusetts, on the 18th day, 18th day of May, the year 2013. Thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. President Moore, Professor Fideller, distinguished faculty, members of the administration, and uh, you, the great class of 2013. <laughs> Parents, Friends, grandparents, 
people from all over the country, and Rosalie, my editor-in-chief, my wife, my mission control. <laughs> Not long ago, I spoke at a university in California where during the question and answer period after my talk, I was asked by one member of the audience, aside from Harry Truman and John Adams, how many other presidents have you interviewed? <laughs> Appearances notwithstanding, I did not know either Mr. Truman or Mr. Adams. <laughs> However, I came to know each of them very, very well. And one of the blessings of historical research and bio biographical research is in many ways you come to know these people better than you know people in real life. Because for one thing, in real life, you don't get to read other people's mail. But in researching people like Washington and Adams and Abigail Adams, uh, Washington Roebling, the builder of the Brooklyn Bridge, Emily Roebling, his wife, you get to know them very well. You keep company with them year after year. So just as one gets to know the people one works with in an office or on a faculty, you get to know those people and you learn an immense lot about them, but you also earn a very large bundle of knowledge from them. From George Washington, I learned you don't give up when you're behind. From Abigail Adams, I will always remember her line to her son, John Quincy, as he was about to sail off on a very dangerous voyage to France during the Revolutionary War. Great necessities call out great virtues. And certainly we saw that here in Boston on April 15th. I also learned from Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr., who became one of the great figures in the uh, medical school at Harvard, that talking is a very good way to find out what you think. <laughs> so if you like to talk, keep on talking. I would like to tell you in brief why I feel that a knowledge of history is vitally important to everyone who's a citizen of this magnificent country. History teaches us to evaluate character. History is an aid to navigation in difficult times. Harry Truman said, the only new thing in the world is the history you don't know. How can we say we love our country and take no interest in our country's story? So I want to urge you, particularly you of the Leslie class of 2013, to read. Read, read, read. We're here to celebrate a commencement. Commencement means beginning. Some of the best books and the most influential books in your lives are still ahead of you. And the reading you do will never leave you. You think it does, but then it comes back and it reminds you, it helps you through difficult situations. Go back and reread books that you liked earlier in your life and keep on doing it. You'll find that not only has the world changed and you've changed, but you will change often in how you react to what you're reading. I know it's, a, it's the tradition for commencement speakers to offer some advice. And so I'd like to offer you some advice. Work hard at whatever you do. Enjoy the work. Enjoy every day, the present day. And remember that you're learning more than you realize every day, just from life. Cultivate and build your innate ability to have curiosity. 
You've been required for the last four years and earlier to have the answers to questions over and over again. You're tested. Do you have the answers? Now you're free to start asking questions. And questions is how you find things out. And never underestimate what other people might know. Sometimes people who are, seem to be the least possible source of interesting information or great stories turn out to be the greatest source imaginable. Be careful, be careful of first impressions. They can often be very wrong. And that includes the first impressions about places as well as people. And whenever you check out of a hotel, don't forget to tip the maid. Now, I want to profess publicly, happily, that contrary to a lot of what my fellow historians, biographers, scholars, intellectuals, people on television would have you believe, there is good cause for optimism. Optimism may not seem in style or very cool, but I am extremely optimistic because all you have to do is know some history and you know there's very good reason for optimism. I'm optimistic for a very great number of reasons. One of them is you, you and your generation. I'm amazed at how much you know. I'm amazed at how much you know how to do already, particularly in the field of electronic communications. I am totally at a loss to understand how you do that. And I'm also immensely impressed by how good-looking you are. People say to me, do you think America is in decline? My answer is, it depends on whom you're asking. Ask the women of our country, is America in decline? No. Ask African Americans, is America in decline? No. Asians, homosexuals, no. There is more freedom, more true equality than there's ever been in my lifetime, and I'm almost 80 years old. Keep it going. Keep the trend going. Do not stand by as spectators when you see people in public life misbehaving, using bad judgment, or actually performing in a corrupt and contrary way to all that we believe in. Throw them out of office. That's how the system works. And don't ever doubt the importance of leadership, not just in political life, in everything. One of the most obvious fundamental lessons of history is very little is ever accomplished alone. It's a joint effort. America is a joint effort, and we must remember that. But it can't be just a joint effort. We have to have leaders, and that's where you come in. You've had the privilege, you've had the rare chance to have a great education, and we're counting on you to step in and do the job as best you can. And if you have that spirit, and if you never forget how lucky we are to be Americans, that we live in a good country, and we are a good people at heart, and we haven't got the blessings that we enjoy because they just fell out of the sky. It's because of all those people that work so hard and often a great sacrifice to see that we have what we have and we can't just stand by and let it erode or blow away. We have to do our part and do it even better than the previous generations have done. And you can do that. That's what I'm most optimistic about, you. Now, to quote the immortal Jonathan Swift, 
May you live all the days of your life. Thank you.